DVD isn't just better than a VCR, it's amazingly better. Here's a scene from a movie on VHS cassette. Now here's the same scene on DVD. Everybody my age pees their pants, it's the coolest. Landing smack dab in the middle of the 90s, 95 would be about as 90s as you could get. A comeback of his airness. America would be attacked from within and Microsoft would show some flex. So hold on, we know how much you love these timeline videos. I can't stop! We're going to talk about the news, culture, sports and entertainment and all that was weird in the 90s. This is Timeline. This is gonna be a good archive because it's all about 1995. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what you were doing in the mid-90s. Now, are you ready to go back to 95? Hell no! Too bad. This is 1995. You dumb bastard. It's not a schooner, it's a sailboat. A square is a sailboat, stupid man. The year started out on a bittersweet note, as comic strip fans said goodbye to the far side. Originally syndicated in 1980, the long-running single-panel comic by Gary Larson appeared in over 1,900 newspapers around the world. The Far Side had previously won Best Syndicated Panel in 1985 and in 1987, and Larson himself won the Rubin Award for Outstanding Cartoonist of the Year in 1991. Larson said he was ending the strip because he wanted to avoid fatigue, which he believed would result in a loss of quality. On January 23rd, paleontologist Michael Brunet discovered a fossilized lower jawbone that still had seven teeth, including a lower second incisor, both lower canines, and all four premolars. The specimen, Brunet nicknamed Abel after a deceased colleague, was about 3.6 million years old. These remains, discovered in central Chad, were the first of their kind found outside of southern or eastern Africa. They were eventually named Australopithecus Bahrel Ghazali. On January 25th, the world came pretty close to nuclear war. Norwegian scientist Kolbjorn Adolfsson launched a Black Brandt rocket from the Anjoya rocket range off the northwest coast of Norway. Adolfsson was part of a team studying the Aurora Borealis using the rocket, which would fly close to Russian airspace. Granted permission by Russian authorities, Russian radar operators mistook the rocket for a Trident missile launched from a U.S. submarine. Boris Yeltsin was alerted and given the nuclear briefcase, but he didn't believe the U.S. would launch an unprovoked attack, and a mere five minutes later, the radar operators confirmed the rocket was headed harmlessly out to sea. Thanks, Boris. Moving into February, baseball star Daryl Strawberry was suspended for 60 days by Major League Baseball after violating a drug aftercare program he had agreed to after admitting a relapse into substance abuse. The suspension immediately led to his release by the San Francisco Giants. Strawberry's battles with substance abuse were, unfortunately, nothing new, dating at least back to 1990 when he checked into rehab in New York. Three days later on the 9th, Riverdance the Show debuted at the Point Theatre in Dublin. Starring Gene Butler and Michael Flatley, the show went on to play over 11,000 performances for roughly 25 million people in 46 countries. The Riverdance Spectacle started as an interval performance at the 39th Eurovision Song Contest. Celtic Choir Anuana and the magical dance partnership of Gene Butler and Michael Flatley. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen Riverdance. River dance. Which would later earn the title, The Lord of the Dance. The performance of the battling dancers was so well received, it was said to overshadow the main event. In the middle of February, the Raleigh-Durham Fugitive Task Force, working with the FBI, arrested computer hacker Kevin Mitnick. The 31-year-old had been previously convicted in 1988 after breaking into corporate computer systems and stealing programs. This time, Mitnick was alleged to have electronically attacked corporations and communication carriers in North Carolina, California, and Colorado. I was an accomplished computer trespasser. I don't consider myself a thief. I didn't use it for financial gain, nor exactly. did I cause any harm. Mitnick would eventually be charged with 25 counts of computer crimes. Along with the original probation violation, he would serve five years in jail before being released in January of 2000. Moving into March, on the 13th, Radiohead released their second album, entitled The Bends. It's the first recording that's really come from us. I don't really care what people, how people take it, and it's a really nice feeling, it's a really liberating feeling. Produced by John Leckie and engineered by future Radiohead producer Nigel Godrich, the album represented a stylistic shift that moved the band away from the post-grunge sound of their previous album, Pablo Honey. 
The Bends would go on to be ranked on Q's 100 Greatest Albums Ever and on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time. The next day, we go to the heavens, where space got a little crowded when the record for the most people in space simultaneously was set at 13. That number included eight Americans as well as five Russians. The 13 space travelers were on two unrelated missions, with seven of the Americans aboard the space shuttle Endeavor and everybody else on the Russian space station Mir. Roughly how long ago do you think slavery was abolished in all of the United States? I know it was during Abraham Lincoln, not during Abraham Lincoln. During Bill Clinton, 1995. The following day on March 16th in the year 1995, the state of Mississippi formally ratified the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, which officially abolished slavery 130 years after the 13th Amendment was passed. First passed by Congress on January 31, 1865, the amendment codified into federal law the idea that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. It also gave Congress the power to enforce that edict through appropriate legislation. A little late, but good job, Mississippi, I guess. On March 18th, superstar Michael Jordan faxed the media with two words, I'm back. Jordan, who had retired from basketball to play minor league baseball in 1993, returned to the NBA. Jordan would play his first game back against the Indiana Pacers while wearing number 45, the number he donned for his baseball career. In a relatively unimpressive game for Jordan, Michael shot seven for 28, scored 19 points, had six rebounds, six assists, with three steals. Zero to call people collect. Stop. It's expensive. What to do? Dial 1 800 collect. As seen on TV, dialing 1 800 collect instead of zero saves the people you call up to 44%. Hi, Grandma. Dial it today. On March 20th, we go to Tokyo, Japan, where 12 people were killed and over 5,000 were injured when several packages containing deadly sarin gas were set off in Tokyo's subway system. Police would learn that the attack was instituted by the Om Shinrikyo or Supreme Truth Cult. Led by a 40-year-old partially blind Shoko Asahara, the cult had thousands of followers across the country, as well as over a billion dollars at its disposal. Authorities discovered tons of the chemicals used to produce the deadly gas at a camp located at the base of Mount Fuji, as well as plans to buy nuclear weapons from Russia. Top cult leaders were arrested, but it wouldn't be in time to prevent four more attacks on the subways. Asahara was eventually discovered hiding out in a secret room at the Mount Fuji compound on May 16th. In 2004, he would be convicted and sentenced to death, that sentence finally being carried out on July 6, 2018. In late March, Iron Mike Tyson, the former heavyweight champion of the world, was released from prison. According to prison officials, Tyson neither requested nor received any special favors while on the inside. In the last three years, I had the chance to reflect on my life and I will continue my journey to making myself a better person. Tyson wouldn't wait long to make his comeback to boxing, and in August 1995, he jumped back in the ring against Peter McNeely. That fight only lasted 89 seconds before McNeely's corner man jumped into the ring and threw in the towel. Moving into April, we would see America under attack when security guard and ex-Army soldier Timothy McVeigh drove a rented rider truck to the federal building in downtown Oklahoma City and parked it out front. Inside was a massive homemade bomb made from fertilizer and diesel fuel. At 9.02 a.m., the bomb exploded. A third of the federal building was instantly destroyed. 168 people perished in the attack, including 19 children, and hundreds more were injured, making it the single deadliest act of homegrown terrorism in American history. The FBI traced the truck part serial numbers to a body shop in Kansas, where employees gave feds a description of the suspect. It didn't take long to identify McVeigh, who, amazingly, was already in jail. He had been arrested by an Oklahoma state trooper just 90 minutes after the explosion, because his getaway car had no license plate and McVeigh was also in possession of a concealed weapon. McVeigh would eventually be convicted and sentenced to death, which would be carried out on June of 2001. 
At the end of April, a team of butchers in Ontario, Canada, created the longest sausage in the history of the world at 28.77 miles. Wait a second. Yeah, 28.77 miles, or 46.3 kilometers long. The sausage, created by Mac Wazen, president of a national meat shop chain, with the help of one of his company's suppliers, J.M. Schneider Incorporated, managed to hold on to its record for nearly 20 years. We fast forward to December 1st, 2014, when the record was broken by Romanian sausage makers, with a sausage that measured 38.99 miles, or 62.75 kilometers, in the parking lot of a car for Ploiesti, located in Ploiesti City, Romania. I hope somebody brought some mustard to that party. Moving into May, we turn to sports, where an era came to an end when the Boston Celtics played their final game at the Boston Garden on the 5th. Modeled on New York's Madison Square Garden, the Garden held its first event, a boxing match, on November 17, 1928. The Celtics went out on a fairly underwhelming note, losing to the Orlando Magic 95-92. Boston Garden is now closed. In mid-May, Tibet's Dalai Lama identified six-year-old Gedan Choki Naima as the 11th Panchen Lama, which is the second highest spiritual leader in all of Tibetan Buddhism. The celebrations were short-lived, though. Just three days later, the Chinese government took Gedan and his family into custody and then announced their own pick to serve as the Panchen Lama, Yen K. Norbu, who was rejected by Tibetan Buddhists. In the 25 years since his abduction, China has provided little information as to Gedan's whereabouts. The Chinese government has stated both that Gedan needed to be protected from separatists and that he was living the life of an ordinary Tibetan boy. We'll make spears. Hundreds of them. Long spears. Twice as long as a man. Not long. Right. Some men are longer than others. Your mother been telling you stories about me again, eh? <laughs> It was in late May when actor Christopher Reeve, known for his role as Superman, was paralyzed after being thrown from his horse during an equestrian competition. His spinal cord is uh, uh, damaged, but uh, uh, in continuity. The accident left Reeve paralyzed from the neck down and bound to a wheelchair. Reeve went on to become an advocate for people with spinal cord injuries, as well as a lobbyist for government funding of embryonic stem cell research. We're all one great big family. And any one of us could get hurt at any moment. Croissant Pocket, from Hot Pockets brand. Let's try it. Sandwiches stuffed with fabulous fillings like chicken and broccoli. Mmm. Croissant Pockets from Hot Pockets. Moving into June, Professor Carl E. Wieman and senior scientist Eric A. Cornell of the National Institute of Standards and Technology created the world's first Bose-Einstein condensate, a new form of matter. In a nutshell, the Bose-Einstein condensate, or BEC, allows physicists to study the extremely small world of quantum physics as if they are looking at it through a magnifying glass. The possibility of the BEC was predicted by Albert Einstein back in 1924 and was building on previous work done by Satendra Nath Bose, who believed the condensate would occur when the waves of individual atoms begin to overlap and behave in identical fashion, forming a superatom. The creation of the Bose-Einstein condensate initiated an entirely new branch of atomic physics, which has since led to several fascinating discoveries. On July 2nd, Hideo Nomo of the Los Angeles Dodgers became the first Major League Baseball player from Japan to make the MLB All-Star Game. Nomo had made his debut with the Dodgers just a few months earlier on May 2nd, where he pitched five scoreless innings and allowed just one hit. Nomo started the All-Star Game for the National League and pitched two scoreless innings, allowing just one hit. Hideo would go on to win Rookie of the Year. Moving into August, the world observed the 50th anniversary of when the United States dropped Little Boy on the city of Hiroshima. Over 50,000 people attended a memorial service at the Hiroshima Peace Park in Japan, which was built directly below where the atomic weapon was detonated. At 8.15 a.m., the same time of the explosion, bells and sirens throughout the city were sounded, followed by a moment of silence. Hiroshima's mayor, Takashi Hiraoka apologized for the suffering caused by Japanese colonialism during the Second World War and warned against the continued existence of nuclear weapons. On August 24th, Microsoft released the operating system Windows 95. The very first copy sold early Thursday morning in New Zealand. The buyer was a 19-year-old business student 
will pay the equivalent of 130 American dollars. The advancements made to the graphical user interface represented the biggest step away from the company's original text-based MS-DOS system yet. Windows 95 also integrated with Microsoft's new Internet Explorer web browser, which made the product easy to use and gave it a big <coughs> illegal <coughs> edge over chief competitor Netscape. We are rocking the desktop. Moving into September, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum opened in Cleveland, Ohio. The Hall of Fame Foundation, which was behind the construction, dated back to 1983 and held its first induction ceremony in 1986, but never had a physical space to call home. Many cities were considered, but Cleveland eventually became the clear choice. The mistake by the lake was the home of career DJ Alan Freed, who was the first to coin the term rock and roll. The museum's pyramid, which also includes a 162-foot tower and a 65,000-square-foot plaza, was designed by I.M. Pei. On September 3rd, a new website, the Auction Web, was launched by computer programmer Pierre Omidyar. The company soon changed its name to eBay. It was Omidyar's attempt to create a perfect market where anything and everything could be sold at its ideal price. The site's first sale was a broken laser printer, placed up for auction by Omidyar himself. Initially, Auction Web attracted mostly techies and Beanie Baby collectors. By September of 1998, eBay would go public. I'm going to let you die quicker, but with much more pain. I envy your normal life. Put the gun down, baby. It seems that envy is my sin. No, oh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the what's gun. in the Box. On September 19th, the anti-technology terrorist, known as the Unabomber, saw his political manifesto published by both the New York Times and the Washington Post. The two papers had agreed to publish the document in hopes that someone might identify the content, and by proxy, the author, who had spent 17 years killing and maiming people with homemade bombs. The plan worked. David Kaczynski recognized the writing as belonging to his older brother, Theodore John Kaczynski, who went by the nickname Ted. Once a teacher at the University of California, Berkeley, Ted Kaczynski later moved to a secluded cabin in Lincoln County, Montana. It was from there that he would conceive and execute the terror campaign which claimed three lives and injured 23 more. Ted Kaczynski would finally be arrested on April 3, 1996. He would be eventually convicted of the attacks and sentenced to life in prison without parole. Just two days later, we go to India, where rumors of the elephant-headed deity Ganesh sipping milk from a spoon began to spread across the country. It wouldn't take long for Hindus around the world to become gripped by the fantastic tale, and huge crowds of believers began to gather at temples to catch a glimpse of the alleged miracle. It started at a temple in South New Delhi, when a worshipper offered a spoonful of milk to a statue of Ganesh. When the spoon was held up to the trunk of the statue, the liquid seemed to disappear into the idol. Scientists from India's Ministry of Science and Technology investigated the claim, and after some experimentation with colored water, determined that the effect was actually occurring due to capillary action. Leave it to science to ruin the fun. Thanks, science. In late September, we turn to sports, where Minnesota Twins center fielder Kirby Puckett suffered a broken jaw after being hit by a pitch from Cleveland's Dennis Martinez during the first inning of a game at the Metrodome. Sadly, the beaning caused Puckett, who had been an all-star for 10 consecutive seasons, to experience vision problems, which prematurely ended his legendary career. I got it on, and I gave it everything I had. Heading into October, we go to Los Angeles, where at the so-called trial of the century, O.J. Simpson was acquitted of killing his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. O.J., who was flanked by defense attorney Johnny Cochran and personal friend Robert Kardashian, mouthed the words, thank you. Simpson's family celebrated in the courtroom as Ron Goldman's family wept only feet away. Testimony in the trial, which included 120 witnesses, 45,000 pages of evidence, and 1,100 exhibits, took nearly nine months. But the jury reached their verdict in less than four hours. Fox is going to implode a major Las Vegas hotel. Come on, would you rather see a ball drop or a building come down? For Stingbat Dynamite New Year's Eve on Fox. Gonna be a blast. On October 16th, the Million Man March was held in Washington, D.C. 
The event, intended to promote African-American unity and family values, was organized by Louis Farrakhan. Not all black community leaders were on board with the march, with Representative John Lewis being among the most prominent to oppose it on the grounds that he believed Farrakhan wanted to resegregate America. People don't usually jump into a vat of acid twice, do they? <laughs> There you go. Oh, yeah, we, we got you this T-shirt. Yeah! Our new T-shirt. Hey, buddy, try it on. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, on November 6th, Cleveland Browns owner Art Modell held a press conference to announce that he was moving the beloved Browns to Baltimore. The announcement hit Cleveland like a ton of lake fire, and the city voted to approve the remodeling tax the very next day. But it was a little too late. The city sued, and eventually a settlement was reached whereby the Browns' name would remain in Cleveland and Modell's team in Baltimore would be considered a new expansion team, which became the Baltimore Ravens. Wait a minute. I just lit a rocket. Rockets explode! Hey, Buzz! You're flying! This isn't flying. This is falling with style. Look what they did to my hand, man. All right, I'm going to give you a choice. You can either have the money and the hammer, or you can walk out of here. You can't have both. What do you want? I just want to get out of here. And don't forget to tell your friends what happens if they f around here. Moving into December, an era in rock music came to an end when the Grateful Dead announced that they would be breaking up. The decision came just a few months after the band lost singer-guitarist Jerry Garcia to a heart attack. Various members continued to play in acts like Dead & Company, Rat Dog, and Phil and & Friends, among many others. In mid-December, the presidents of Bosnia, Croatia, and Serbia signed a formal agreement ending the war in Bosnia and creating a general framework agreement for peace in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The agreement, which had been reached after extensive negotiations led by Chief U.S. Negotiator Richard Holbrook and Secretary of State Warren Christopher, took place in Dayton, Ohio, of all places. The agreement was formally signed in Paris, and all sides agreed to recognize a single sovereign state known as Bosnia and Herzegovina. Forget the money. It's a lot of money. What, what are you doing? What do you mean, forget the money? What am I doing? I'm talking to an empty telephone. I don't understand. Because there was a dead man on the other end of this line. And finally, on the last day of the year, Calvin and Hobbes creator Bill Watterson decided to bring his comic to a close. Calvin and Hobbes was syndicated in over 2,400 newspapers, and the 17 books archiving collections of the strips had already sold over 30 million copies. Watterson said that he believed he had done what he could do within the constraints of daily deadlines and small panels and he was eager to work at a more deliberate pace that entailed fewer artistic compromises. As for Calvin, his final words to his faithful friend Hobbes, and by proxy, his readers were, let's go exploring. The end of a comic strip era is how 1995 would start and end. 1996 was just hours away, where it would be a year of a presidential affair, a tragic end of a West Coast rapper, and the debut of a fearless zookeeper. But that is for next time. You're just going to have to wait and cooperate. I'm cooperating here. Coming soon, 1996. So what do you think? What do you miss about the 90s? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history timeline videos.